Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Lorraine Justice, Dean of the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences. I hope you've enjoyed the first few sessions during the 12th annual RIT Entrepreneurs Conference thus far. And I hope you enjoyed your lunch. And now I have the pleasure of introducing the conference keynote, Robert Latour, CIAS photography alum extraordinaire. That's not in the script. Robert is the perfect fit for this conference as he has embraced RIT's collaborative edge, arts with photography and film, business with marketing and entrepreneurship, engineering with software and design. Immediately following this presentation, he, his presentation, he will announce the Tiger Tank winners. Robert Latour joins us from Dallas, Texas, where his company, The Big Freeze Worldwide, is headquartered. He began his career as a photographer with the National News and Wire Services in New York City. After traveling the globe, he pursued solo endeavors in Texas with Big Fish Films and becoming a director using dramatic lighting and an innovative approach to directory and an innovative directorial approach. In 1995, he became fascinated with the frozen moment, having a flair for engineering and a natural interest in how things work, Latour looked for new ways to use this unique look in his commercials. He designed and built his first big free system, which skillfully produced a cutting edge frozen effect the Big Freeze Worldwide, created and owned by Latour, is now the largest and most advanced camera array system in the world. The Big Freeze system is now in its fifth generation and is completely digital and driven by software. It can be seen in feature films, commercials, and on the red carpet. Latour has hurdled feats in technology and software to advance the system to the stunning, amazing effect that it creates today. Please join me in welcoming Robert Latour. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And you know, thank you for you know, coming. I would like to do this a little different than probably what you're used to. I could, I could stand up here and I can give you the speech and then you can ask three or four questions. Um, I'd like to you know, turn it more into a you know, town hall meeting. That means I would like for you to ask questions while we're talking so that we can interact on that thought while it's happening. Um, the first thing you ought to know is that I'm not a teacher. So I'm not a professor, so I can, I can kind of ramble around a little bit. So if I'm, if I'm not talking about things that are interesting to you, bring up that question while I'm on that topic or you know, close to that topic, and um, we can kind of talk about my experience with it. Really, all I can really kind of bring to this is my 40 years of experience, how I took ideas and how I like linearly created an actual product that is used in everyday, you know, photographic world. Um, that journey, and you're all going to take a journey as entrepreneurs. And I've got some, I have some hints that worked for me, that I'm willing to share with you guys. And I have some ideas that I want to hear back from everyone. Um, so that we can kind of collaborate. One thing you ought to kind of keep in, in you know, mind is that entrepreneurs are collaborators. So I'd like to start off by asking you guys a question. Can anyone tell me, or maybe more than one of you, can you tell me what an entrepreneur is? Anyone know? A venturer? Anyone else? A person that starts a business. Someone who uses the items around them to progress themselves forward. Okay. 
And I, go ahead. Solves problems. You're all actually correct. It's all pieces of all of those. An entrepreneur is a you know tapestry. You've got a lot of pieces to the puzzle. And there is no book written on your puzzle, how you're going to come up with your idea. So that means you've got to extract all of the you know, like puzzle pieces from things that surround you. I had a very unique puzzle to solve. I was interested in, you know, making pho a, like photographic images, and that's what I did for almost 25 years. I made TV commercials, I worked on feature films, I made documentaries, um, I made short stories. I, I, I created anything that had to do with a camera and how to use that media to tell a story. Then, I, like she says, I got interested in what we call, you know, frozen moment, you know, multiple camera arrays. What that meant to me was, how do I take unlike units, meaning cameras, and, and ask them to act like one camera? How do I take 400 cameras and like, get them all to fire at the same time and to create an asset that we could view from 360 degrees? It was very difficult because that technology hadn't been developed. This was way back in early 90s when the like, Matrix movies came out. You're all familiar with the Matrix movies. And how Keanu Reeves looked like he was, you know, frozen in space. Um, and you've all seen the behind the scenes of how Keanu Reeves and, and how they created that. It was the way that they did that, and I'll just briefly tell you. They, you know, captured Keanu on a, a green screen. You all know what green screen is. And that enables you to composite, you know, CGI images into the background. So once you have an image of all the perspectives, Keanu Reeves was on wires held in place. While he was held in like place, they would capture, image capture they would call it. Just like stop motion, just like animation. Once you have that asset, and we're talking 90, 92, 93, there was no digital camera. There was film cameras. We're talking 35 millimeter, like um, um, SLR cameras, not like, like DSLR, like you all know now. And they would take that frame and they would manually stitch it together, glue them together to create a, a film chain. Then they would paint out all the green, frame by frame, and they would s computer generate the like 3D background where Keanu Reeves looks like he's in the in lie environment. Each three to four seconds worth of screen time would take three to four months to create that frame. Very long time digitally, um, you know, if they had digital photography back in those days, that would have been, you know, shortcutted. I started my camera arrays you know, with, you know, film cameras. The first one that we built had 300 and, you know, 60 cameras in it. It was on a, you know, 62 foot diameter array. Each camera represented one degree of the uh, 360 circle. It took 11 months to build the like prototype. That prototype when we first used it, did not work. Um, there was a lot of problems with it. N number one was, how do we fire it? How do we support it? How do we get the images out of the camera? How do we process it? A every, every part of this was a hurdle. Why this is important for entrepreneurs to know is that the idea, let's take a picture in 360, Let's freeze it for 12 seconds, the idea. How do I get over all of these hurdles 
to get to the end product. Entrepreneurs are adventurers, I heard. Ad adventurers go where no one else goes. That's what entrepreneurs do. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you have to be willing. You have to be able to go where no one wants to go. The idea is not quite good enough. The idea is the spark. How do I get the spark into an a, a, a electrical beam that creates the product? And how do I know that there's a customer for that product? So over this 40 years, I kind of came up with what worked for me. I call it, there's an acronym for what I call it. It's called TRAP, T-R-A-P. Each letter stands for something. I asked some students that had lunch with me today what TRAP meant to them. Could you guess what the acronyms were? Anyone out there, anyone here from lunch, tell me what TRAP meant? Say it again. No, nope. close. <laughs> you know, T means transform. Transform. You have to be willing. How do I transform the idea into a product? There is a process here. It's not good enough just to have the idea until you have figured out how to transform the idea into a tangible you know, product. Anyone have an idea what the R means in TRAP, T-R? Replicate's not bad. Recreated is very close. Reform, perfect. It means reinvent. Reinvent to me meant I needed to reinvent what my idea was so I could figure out how to get over these hurdles. How do I, how do I support this camera system? I have to reinvent what, I'm, what I think will work and try it and then reinvent it again. That's a willingness to keep reinventing. Entrepreneurs are adventurers. They reinvent. <laughs> they reinvent because they have to to satisfy the idea. If you don't satisfy the idea and you're not willing to reinvent, in my book, you're not an entrepreneur. The a letter A, T-R-A. Anyone know what A means? Apply is pretty good. Think a little more current. What do we do now that's very current? Adapt is good. We align ourselves. We are networking freaks. We align ourselves with people that think like us. If I had an idea, I want to align myself with individuals that shared my idea. I become a network person. You must be good at all of these things. You must be good at transform, reinvent, and align. I had to. Now this formula works for me. It worked for me. I have a you know, multi-million dollar company. We've got systems that are spread all over the world. We have, we have the who's who of customers, the Amazons of the world, the you know, visas of the world. These are our customers. The idea was able to be reinvented and transformed and aligned to create a product. And oh, my computer went to sleep. Uh -huh. The last one of the last letter in the word trap is P. Anyone have a, 
an idea what the P means. Presents, pretty close. Perform, that's it. That's it. So now that you've gotten over seven tenths of all the hurdles, you have now have to perform. The system has to do what? It has to work. If it doesn't work, you've satisfied some personal goals and you've satisfied some, and you've given up parts of your life because you've spent an enormous amount of time. But the idea as an entrepreneur is to turn it into a tangible revenue oriented device, a stream, something that makes you income. That means the device must need to work, and it needs to work very well. There is very little tolerance in the real world for close. Nothing can be close. It has to be really good. They're not going to pay you to do it close. <laughs> They're only going to pay you when you succeed. Trap worked for me. Transform, reinvent, align, and perform. You'll all come up with your own acronyms. The three or four you know, pieces to your personal entrepreneurial like journey that's going to make sense to you. It made sense to me because I, was, I had a like tangible product. You guys might be entrepreneurs just with the idea and then turn the idea over to someone that can produce the idea. I'm the kind of guy, I'm a control freak. That means I want to know every little piece of it and I want to touch every little piece of it so that I can be a, like linearly attached to the product. I'll, I'm going to show you one example of what I'm talking about. There's a couple videos here. Um, so watch the first one. I think it's, uh, this one's done for Ralph Lauren. And we just did this one about a month ago. And it's about, and you can go to their website now and probably see it. Um, and it has to do with, you know, Polo's new line of sport clothes. Sounds goofy, but the idea was, how do we show people, athletes in action? Okay? You know, now, fast forward, the original camera was all film related. We're now in our sixth generation, I believe. She said five, but it's really the sixth like, like generation of it. It's gotten faster, bigger megapixel cameras, more digital asset, more controllability, more automation. It's you know, gone from hardware and it's transitioned into software. We now control all the cameras globally. We, can, we interface with all of the like, firmware that's in these cameras. So we've gone from a Frankenstein to a Ferrari in, you know, 25 years. Um, it's taken time. So watch this video and then we can talk about it. This one you'll see it not just frozen, but you're going to see it in what we call, you know, virtual camera. Virtual camera means ultra slow motion. That means I can shoot at phantom speeds while I'm going around the like subject. So take a peek and then we can talk about it and then we can go back to how TRAP may be applied to how I did this.
Now, I was lucky from the standpoint that my first customer for this were, you know, researchers. They were, it had, it happened to be a very prestigious, you know, like medical fa um, facility. It's called MD Anderson. And MD Anderson is a world famous cancer hospital. It's like the Mayo Clinic. And on their board of directors was a who's who. The guy that invented the artificial heart, the ex-presidents and blah, blah, blah. So they had an, a huge endowment. They wanted something that represented in their TV commercials how they have wiped out cancer. And the way that they've wiped out cancer is that they've stopped time. So the idea was stop time for 12 seconds, watch this patient in all their daily life, swimming, jumping, you know, playing baseball, jogging, all those fun things that you and I all do, and how cancer can stop all of that, stops your life. MD Anderson, through their research and their development, they bring, they give life back. So this concept, they funded my capital. They gave me a half a million dollars back in 1994 as build us a camera that we could shoot these four commercials with. Well, you know, that was the guardian angel part of this. But the responsibility is I've got to take a half a million dollars and I have to produce four commercials. That means I have to have this giant camera to be able to do it. Fast forward 11 months to develop the prototype. And when it didn't work, <laughs> we spent another six months perfecting what was wrong and finally getting it to work. So entrepreneurs, unfortunately, in our world, have to go to what we call VC, venture capitalist, or get you know, private equity funds to finance their idea, or they finance it themselves. Even though I got the $500,000 to start, we've spent over two and a half million dollars just on the R&D to perfect what the camera systems can now do. <coughs> we reinvest. Money that I make from projects, I put back into reinventing where I want to go next. It, you, you can't build it once. You have to be able to support it, not just financially, but you need to be able to support it with a, a like linear products that enable it to grow. It's not good enough to win the race once. You gotta win the race every week. <laughs> it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You train for marathons for years. You run the you know, you know, four-hour marathon, and then all of a sudden you've got the bug, and you want to run another marathon three years from now, or two years from now. You train again. This is what it's all about. Commitment, tenacity, never giving up, and the like, willingness to finish. Entrepreneurs must finish what they start. There is a high degree of failure. I'm, I'm not going to stand up here and lie and tell you that it's always going to work. There is the fear factor that I would spend the time, spend the money, and get to the finish line and maybe not win the race, but get pretty close. And I have have spent a lot of time and a lot of money and and my product didn't work enough, and my customer went away. So there is some fear factor. Entrepreneurs are adventurers, and they are risk takers. But it's a certain breed of individual. I would imagine that you're all here because you're that breed. You want to try that path. I don't work for anyone else. I've never had a job. 
I've always worked on my ideas and, you know, my designs. I'm one of the guys that can use my left brain creatively and my, like, right brain, um, you know, theoretically at the same time. And I can s somehow been able to figure out how to marry all that together. Sir? Did you have competitors along the way while you were... Yes, there's always competitors. There's competitors now. Yeah, but the, the, most of the competitors are much, much smaller. Um, the technology's kind of caught up a little bit, you know, and, and the cameras have gotten better. There are some ways of doing it, not as sophisticated as we're doing it, but successfully do it, but there is a marketable, visible difference. Plus, we're so far ahead now with, and we have such a huge, you know, system that it's very difficult to surpass us. But that's constant. We call it optimizing. We're now in a phase where we do nothing but optimize, meaning make it better. Make it faster, make it more robust, work on the control software, work on the control hardware, eliminate more of the variables, when the first camera system came out, it had about 25 variables, parts, variables. It's now down to seven. We've eliminated as many variables as we could. Our goal is to get it to three variables. And then, then we've gotten it as far as we could ever get it. But experience and education and, and the more we do it, the more that we learn. And the more that we learn, the more we're able to put back into the like next generation. And what that next generation camera will do is it will be a 3D modeling device. But since we can synchronize, 3D models right now create static images of individuals as if they're on a you know, wedding cake. They're not moving. We, our technology can take you in 3D space, and you can move, jump, leap, and pose, and I can create a 3D model of that. That changes the game again. Entrepreneurs change the game. You must be willing to be the guy in front. Willie Nelson had a, uh, I don't know if you all know who Willie Nelson is, um, the you know, country music rock guy. He's got one of those big Prevost-like tour buses. And on the back of the bus, he's got this slogan. It's a little off, but you can deal with it. He says, the you know, view never changes if you're not the lead dog. That's basically what you have to be. You need to decide to be the lead dog so that you're the leader and they're following you. The entrepreneur pushes out, pushes to the front, gets to the lead, and then, tr and then stays in the lead. I'm going to show you one, a, a, like another one. I'm not sure which one this one is. Go ahead. This might be the, you know, Stanley Cup. Um, yeah, this is the Stanley Cup. Uh, um, that we did for uh, ESPN. These were used for station promos during the, the like family stuff playoffs. These were the NHL stars, the Sidney Crosbys and all of those guys. And, you know, we had to create it on the ice. So, because hockey obviously takes place on the ice. So that means we had to build the camera 
to work out in a frozen rink uh, for a few days. You can see what it looked like. You can change the shape. They're not always a circle. They can be what we call ellipses or um, you know, helixes. Again, it's all about the energy freezing the, you know, the ice that they're hitting the like puck at us and be able to you know, like witness it. Sir? Yeah, it's, it's in a renaissance right now, and I'm going to show you where it's going. You know, these are basically things that we do for broadcast television. And, you know, broadcast television has a huge appetite because sponsors want to be advertising on like TV because they have, they have product to sell. So they're always looking for an unusual way to, of like doing it. Along with the big freeze came, we've got this camera system now, and it's able to create these really cool images. But how do I really get it into our current world? How do I get it onto my phone? Because now we're talking instant gratification. So another step forward was developing all of the back end. I've got the camera. Now, how do I get, how do I develop all the mobile um, assets that optimize it just like I can do for a commercial, which is in post-production, and do it live? So that meant we had to go back and become web designers, you know, app designers, player designers. We had to reinvent again all of the support linear product that supported what the camera system you know, started out to do. The journey just got longer. I went from here to here, and then I took another step, went from here to here. Now we do 70% of our business is in the mobile side of it. Large events, Lollapalooza, you know, Color Run, the you know, Super Bowl, all of these kind of live activation areas. So we've opened up another sector of opportunity. Customers and, and clients have a huge appetite for what you and I do every day. We share. The appetite for re, you know, branded renewable asset on your phone is here to stay. I'm here to tell you. It's only going to get smaller. It's only going to get faster. Your phone's going to get better. The pipeline's going to get better. Wi-Fi is going to get better. And they're going to continue to keep pushing to you. More notifications. Everyone probably knows that you're being geotagged. You drive by a like Starbucks, your phone can tell you you're near a Starbucks. You're, it will, this is where it's going. Mobile asset. So we've taken it from, you know, capture, process, you know, three weeks to be able to create the image on like film to like digital asset that we can do for TV and commercial and, and um, you know, feature films, editorial, and then take it into the like mobile sector to where it's instant gratification, you know, mobile asset on your phone. That's the future. That's what we're doing now. And we do these too, but you're absolutely right. You don't reinvent to go another step forward. Then I've already used it. I don't want to use it again. Sir. No, um, they're synchronized to be able to, we see the action. For instance, we want the slap. <laughs> so we use laser triggers. We use sound triggers. We design, we're getting ready to do something for the like Super Bowl, 
and it's going to be you catching the touchdown pass. Okay, so on the 50-yard line and running into the end zone with it, you as the guest. So we synchronize them now to take one shot at a time. We use that one shot in our automation to create the effect. We don't take a bazillion pictures, scroll through them to find the one image that maybe makes sense. That would take too long. In a you know, live world, we've got to be able to like, capture you, you know, process that all, and for you to be able to like, share it in under 30 seconds. We then monitor the analytics behind all that, and we can then qualify how many times it's being shared, to go into Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the social medias, all directly from your phone. Is that the only thing you were doing at the time, or are you doing multiple projects? We were doing multiple projects, but this, this took up a good 70% of it. Was the front office going to apply all your time to one thing? Yeah, um, you know, time management is a, is a crucial piece. Like I said, the you know, first system took 11 months and then it didn't work, and then we spent a, like, another five to six months perfecting it so that it would work. You know, and it's, uh, it's a commitment. You've, once, it, it, like I said in the beginning, entrepreneurs must be, must be that kind of cat that doesn't stop until he finishes. You must finish. There is no substitute for quitting. There, that can't happen. You must finish the idea. We've been making, you know, camera systems for, you know, 25 years, for a long time. And they're, you know, they're in constant development now. There are, there are seven of these spread around the world. Uh, we're building two more for Australia. And then there's, you know, two camera systems up in Canada, you know, and, um, you know, four in the U.S., one in Italy, and then one in, one in, you know, London. So, a couple of other things I want to go over on the entrepreneurial side of this. Yes, go. Um, surprisingly very little. Um, I, I've had all the same core engineers um, that started with me 25 years ago, they are still with us. So the core engineers, there were two of those. And then um, there were about a dozen others. Right now, the like company is just under 12. They're called the faithful. They're called the faithful, yes. The, the believers. Thank you. They believe. I mean, you know, that's part of this next piece of this entrepreneurial idea. You have to believe in what you're doing. You got to really have convictions. You got to believe it's a great idea. All the camera manufacturers told me this wouldn't work. Nikon told me it ain't going to work. You can't synchronize them that well. You know, Canon told me that. You know, Panasonic told me that. They all told me you can synchronize them only to this window. And I said, that won't work. It's got to go to this window. The reason that we built them to be um, integrated. That means each section plugs into the next section. So that means any section can create any shape. So if I decided I wanted to create this, which we call the candy cane, that is eight, you know, like 20 degree trusses and six, you know, straight trusses. I could take those same same trusses and create a different shape. Put two curves on one the end, put six straights in the middle, and then more curves on the other end. Create a horseshoe. So, 
Yeah, I don't sell them. You know, we only light, they're only used by um, like big, big freeze. That means we've got camera systems in the US that are all big freeze. They're simultaneously working on like different projects. One's getting ready to go down to New Orleans this week for this thing called, you know, Voodoo Fest. And there's another one that's on its way to California um, to begin like prepping for the like Golden Globes. So it depends on what we're doing and where we're taking them. Yes. I didn't hear you. So, speak a little louder. <coughs> Renew them? I, I didn't hear it. Oh, no. Um, yeah, your digital camera takes a picture, and if we take the picture off of the camera, and it's incorporated into our networking software. So those 100 cameras all download their image to our central control computer. We built that you know, network. That means I see all 100 cameras in numerical order, scaled and tiled, oriented correctly in under two seconds. We call it instant replay. So we don't ever touch the camera once, we, once it's in the like network. Everything else is all done with software. So I don't have to go to the camera, you know, take the card out or do anything goofy like that. These are all controlled by you know, software that we can talk to the cameras with. Yeah. Very. <laughs> I had a full head of hair, now I only have hair in the back of my head. <laughs> so yeah, it was uh, 11 months out of your life and, you know, every day not knowing if it would ever work. It was a real journey. But I'm one of those guys that's kind of driven toward, once I start it, I have to finish it. And that, you know, like I said, the marathon, I'm a firm believer that if you believe that you can do it and you continue to solve it inch by inch instead of feet by feet, then eventually you will get there. I mean, there was a strong possibility that it wouldn't work, but I had enough engineering knowledge and enough information about how cameras worked that I felt 70% sure that I could get it to work. But I was never a 100%. And back in the day when we started it, because of it being film, I couldn't see the images. I had to process the images. So I had to take the film canisters out of the 360 cameras and figure out how to number them because they all looked alike and then find the one frame that was the same frame on every camera, glue them all together somehow and then play it back on a film chain so that I could see it as a you know, motion picture. That was the you know, holy crap moment. It worked. And it was one of those, we did it. How do we do it? And how can we repeat it? The other thing I am about me, and you guys are probably detail freaks, you need to be a detail freak. You write everything down. How you do your craft, creating your formula. You must understand that it is just not going to fall out of the sky, and you're going to have the holy crap moment like I had without all of the hard work. You must be dedicated and you must be willing to go the distance. I would love to hear more about your entrepreneurial ideas because there is a, there's a billion of them um, and that's the beauty of all of this. This is why I was looking forward to communicating what I've done. It doesn't quite relate to the business side of the world because I had to learn business. I had to learn, I didn't have a class when I was here in 1974 and 1975 that was 
entrepreneur. <laughs> you guys have the ability to now be engaged at RIT with, with tools that I didn't have. You have better tools. You simply do. We don't, I didn't have those tools. We had very rudimentary cameras that did very rudimentary things. They, some of the cameras didn't even have batteries. So you turned it on and it was completely manual. There was no such thing as A for auto. <laughs> there was no such thing. <laughs> so you, you know, you've had to develop a you know, process that worked for you. You guys have amazing current and global access to all sorts of things called the internet. <laughs> and the internet provides you with the collection of information that I only dreamed about having. This is, uh, before we start talking about entrepreneurial ideas, you, um, you, you're, you're always looking into the future, but you were a student here at RIT and you suffered through a class that we still have <laughs> students we call HNA, <laughs> and, and history and aesthetics. Yeah. And uh, could you talk a little bit about what kind of inspirations you might have taken from uh, previous generations of entrepreneurs? And that's a great question. And one of the things that, uh, that I kind of like about myself is that the fact that I'm willing to listen. And I'm very interested in how other people did things. Part of the collaboration and you must learn to be a collaborator um, because I think in our day and age without being, a, we're in a communicative business. I must be able to sell my idea visually and financially and to make it a real product that I can survive on and grow that product into a more global business. The tools at RIT are, are informative, and the collaborative part of that is, is one of those things you can't replace easily. You need to take full advantage of all that networking, all of the um, communicative skills that you have been taught or maybe have learned are really valuable. Very, very valuable. And those things will follow you for a long time. As you take this journey and you start this journey with this great idea, collaborate with the people that can help you hurdle it. You're going to have 100 hurdles. There's no way around it. There's no perfect science. This is not, there's no such thing as a perfect science. You must be willing to jump the hurdles. And the more you know, collaborative minds that you can work with, the better. The journey could take less time. Um, depends on how complex it is. I communicate now with two engineers, one in Germany and they like another one in um, um, England that are, you know, working with us on our, you know, 3D modeling capture and, you know, and one in Australia. Um, with a like 3D printer. So we're collaborating now on other devices that use our capture system um, to a nether, you know, you know, nether product. Linear products are mandatory. And it depends on if you're building something consumer or if you're building something as complex as a camera system. Um, consumer products you could take from A to Z pretty quickly, find a distributor that could process that thing, manufacture it, and disperse it, distribute it, um, and then you could build another one. Those are, to me, that's more of an invention, a little less than a entrepreneurial kind of path here. Um, entrepreneurs, in like my mind, are you know, constantly looking for the opportunity that presents to them. And you're, you're, you're working on, you know, multiple things on all different levels. 
You know, my, my time here in the early days of um, RIT when I was here, you know, the beauty of it was the, you know, willingness of the support. No one ever told me no. They just told me, okay, let's try it. And in my world, ph photography is one of those experiments where everything worked. And even if I got a black image, it still worked. You know, I was one of the guys that would take the roll of film and throw it in the oven for a half hour and see what it did when I processed it. <laughs> and, you know, I was interested in experimenting. Um, entrepreneurs are, are those kind of guys that, you know, you have this appetite for, for the what if and, you know, how you turn that what if into a income. Sir. Um, it's funny that you say that because I'm usually the one on the other end of the phone getting the phone call going how much you've inspired us <laughs> and you know how what can you tell us about what we can do for our journey um, like I said when you're the on, I happen to be the lead dog so they were they were I get the phone call of what can you share with us on how you did it that's why I'm here, to give you my trap, my TRAP that worked for me. But you know, they, we do have some customers and some filmmakers that when I get to work on a film, and we worked on a film not too long ago, um, and it was um, the director was very well known, and uh, you might have heard of him, Ridley Scott, and. Um, they use this for some image sequences. And they're going, we couldn't do the shot without this. So it's become a tool. And it's become a device that enables people to think outside the box. So that part of the journey has been personally very rewarding, very heartfelt. And I felt like I've reached where I needed to reach. And uh, we've won Emmy Awards, we've won Clio Awards, we've, been, we've won everything that there could be in our category. Um, so if, I feel really blessed and really lucky that I've been given this opportunity. But I never look at it as a me, I look at it as a we. I don't do this by myself. I'm really good at finding the right individual to you know, help me. And when I don't know something, I reach out for assistance. Don't be afraid to do that. Reach out to your you know, colleagues, your you know, fellow students, your professors, and talk it up. Network it. Work on the idea together. Eventually, you'll figure all the puzzle pieces out and that tapestry will have a vision. But it's, uh, it, on, everyone looks for the shortcut because we want fast. Everyone complains when our internet is too slow. So, you know, right now, you've got to be patient. And, you know, patience is not something we all have, and I have very little of it. <laughs> and, but I've learned over the years to uh, have more of it. And it's, and it's helped me um, understand the process. Some people are like process people, and like some people are goal-oriented and enjoy the process, don't enjoy the process. I'm one of those guys that like the process, like the challenge of like figuring out the endless steps to solve, and every piece of it was part of the education. I felt like I learned as I was going. It helped me in my career, in my like personal life, you know, managing with my children, blah, blah, blah. You know, all of it was 
is in like riched me in a you know real positive way. No, I mean, you know, there's, it's hard in a media world not to be influenced. You know, obviously I was around the guys that were doing the, like, Matrix, and, you know, they had pushed it as far as they could push it, but they, 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 they weren't willing to uh, solve the, you know, time delay problem. Yeah, I mean, the Matrix was an influence on me because it was, it was a collaborative method of, using cameras on green screen, but they couldn't synchronize it. So, yeah, that kind of got my eyeballs on, but then they only went to the 50-yard line. I needed to go down to the end zone. How do I do it better and faster? And that's when we were told it's not possible. They were told that, too, that we have taken these cameras as far as we can take them. That means to 300 microseconds. That was the barrier. How do I close the window to get past the barrier? But for the movie, they were comfortable in what is called you know, post-production. They wouldn't mind throwing money at the post-production because they knew it, and they could solve it with you know, paint box and green screen and you know, CGI. I needed to think outside the box to do it live. I needed to be able to synchronize now because I didn't have weeks and months and endless budgets and my customers potentially would say, forget it, this is too expensive. There's no way we could use it. A movie can because they're spending you know, $100 million on it. Commercials don't spend $100 million. Maybe they spend a million. Some of the big ones spend two or three million. But those are rare. Now it's all about branded content for cheap. We want to do commercials for 50,000. That means the camera system can't cost 50,000 because what happens to the other 26 seconds that you need for 30? So there's, there's a balance here. And you, you bring up something that's really kind of crucial and that's the financial part of this. How does a customer afford it? I've spent two and a half million dollars developing technology. How do I get that money back? And how do I get that money back to support it so I can build more? You know, that's, you have to be willing again to understand that you need a variety of like customers to ultimately pay yourself back. You won't get it back all in one hit. Unless, you know, you get a Google or an Amazon or Microsoft to buy you, and that idea is so compelling that they want it. It could happen. It does happen. You know, it's uh, you know, like Instagram. You know, Instagram started as Instagram. They were bought by Facebook for $3 billion. <laughs> They kept it two years and sold it for $3 billion. I would imagine that they spent probably less than $5 million developing it. Not a bad re return, about 600 to 1. <laughs> so, more questions, I hope. Oh, okay. The biggest mistake... Um, the biggest mis mistake was believing that I could do it quicker. I was surprised that after 11 months, I had only gotten to the stage where I could test it once, and it didn't work. Um, and then I was faced with another five to six months. I, I thought I could do it quicker. And it just, you know, technically was much, much harder. Finding the right puzzle piece and the right engineer that could somehow aid us in what our problems were, you know, technically, you know, took an enormous amount of time. Robert? Yes, sir. Would you be, since we, we were, we're trying to follow the schedule, okay. would you be available if students have questions for you? To sure, stay yeah, and yeah. Talk yeah, it depends when I have to go, but let's see. Okay, I get the 
honor, the great honor, to announce the winners of the 12th annual Tiger Tank competition. I, I didn't get to see it all, so um, I'm sure you all can tell me about it, and I would love to hear it. There are over 70 teams that are, uh, applied for this, and the you know, top five teams you know, pitched their ideas, and I believe that happened today. So let's have kudos out for all 70. And, and those five teams that pitched today, ultra kudos to those guys. The, you know, Tiger Sharks, as they're called, um, were super impressed, and they said this was not an easy decision. So, unfortunately, there is a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, which is good because everyone wins. There are no real losers here, um, so that's great, and I'm real proud of everyone for participating. The, you know, fifth place team winner that wins $250 you know, is called Flick Share. Are they here? Are they here? Come on up, Flick Share. Take a bow. You can come over here and say thank you to your mom and grandmom and whatever. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Tell me what flick share is, because it sounds really cool. Um, it's pretty much a very simple way of watching uh, media content with your loved ones, wherever they are. How'd you come up with the name? Um, flick, really easy, and that's share just came along with it. Sounds awesome. And it's an app? Um, right now, it's just a Chrome Safari extension. OK. And eventually, it'll grow into a web app. Great. Oh, a like web app, not a, not a, phone app. Not a, not a like phone app. Okay. Well, great. Thank you, guys. Um, are, they, are you giving them something here? Or? Let's hear it for Flick App, or like Flip there. Flick Share. Do you want them to stay there? Okay. Just hang out there. The fourth place team wins $500. And they are Free Roam. Is Free Roam here? Come on up, guys. Congratulations. Thanks. Free roam, right? Yes. Free roam. Yep. All right, tell us, tell us briefly what you know, free roam is. Free roam is a interactive dog collar that fits onto the dog and allows him to be in an area that you can monitor. Yes. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> Does it fit any dog? Fit any size? Okay. And it's all Bluetooth, I would imagine? Okay. How'd you come up with that idea? Do you, do you all have dogs? Okay. And your dog doesn't stay where you tell it to stay? Okay. <laughs> Great. The number three place team winning $750 and a 50% scholarship to the graduate business program here at RIT is, drum roll please, <laughs> is, you know, Univent. Come on up, Univent. Congratulations, congratulations. Can you tell us what like Univent is? Hop over there, guys. Can you tell us what like Univent is? So it's a, a like mobile app. Okay, Univent is an app for your phone, which you know gives 
you information on all of the activities taking place on the like campus, and it doesn't matter which campus. And it'll be any college, any, any place you want. Very nice. The second place team winning $1,250 and, you know, $50, and a 50% scholarship to a graduate business program here at RIT is called, you know, Body Cool. Come on up. Oh, look at this. By the way, you didn't even ask one question, either one of you three. <laughs> Disappointed, no. Your favorite movie. I don't know how many years you grow this beard. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Congratulations. Can you tell us a little bit about body cool? Of course. Yes. Um, we're making a body cooling system for people with multiple sclerosis. Basically, it makes it so they can go outdoors without having to look any different than anyone else. Great. Did you hear that? Okay. Thank you. All right, and last, pl the first place, the first place team winning $2,000 and a 100% tuition scholarship to a graduate business program here at RIT is Snow Rag. <laughs> I'm seeing this than I am. You're hired. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. You have to tell me what snow rag means <laughs> and what it does. It's show rag. Okay. <laughs> so this is what they wrote. Show, show rag. Okay. Yeah. It's called show rag. Show rag. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us what it does? Yeah, yeah so it's an interactive interface Here that we... works. Speak in there. Yeah. It's an interactive interface that works with uh, video streaming services where we connect um, the items and clothing that you see on characters in TV shows, and you're able to purchase them right there from the interface. Hey. Oh. You guys, move over just a couple steps so we can, yeah, wait, absolutely. Congratulations. 